Curvatures of the spine. What is normal? What is not normal? When it comes to the spine, we know the spine has a normal position. It should be straight from the front and it should have curves. And these curves exist in the side view of the spine or something that we call the sagittal alignment. And a lot of patients wonder, why is the spine curved? Why can't it just be straight from the front and straight from the side? Well, the curves in the side, from the side actually help to make the spine stronger. It makes, the, it makes the, the spine be able better to absorb and distribute mechanical stress normally applied during movement or compression. It makes the spine more flexible and more better to function and move in our normal daily life with walking and gait. And when you look at the spine from the front or from the back, it should appear very, very straight. But like I said, from the side, it should have an S curve, a soft S in your neck, in your mid back and your low back. In fact, these curves also extend up into the back of your skull and also into your sacrum or tailbone. These main sections are called your cervical spine, which is your neck, your thoracic spine, which is your lower back, and then your lumbar spine, which is considered your lower back. And each section has its own unique curve type. The two different types of curves are something called a lordosis and something called a kyphosis. A lordosis is when the spine actually bends forward. And this forward bend towards the front of the body is typically occurs either in the cervical spine or in the lumbar spine, spine naturally. A kyphosis is when the spine actually bends to the back. And a kyphosis typically occurs in the middle part of your spine. Some patients also consider your sacrum or your tailbone to consider to be have a kyphosis shape. And also your occiput or the back of your skull to have this kyphosis shape, meaning it's bending to the back of your body. If you have too much lordosis, they call that hyperlordosis, most commonly occurring in the lumbar or cervical spine. And you can have, have excesses kyphosis as well, and this is called hyperkyphosis, and this occurs in the mid-back or the mid part of the spine or thoracic spine. We also know that you can have the opposite type of curve characteristic in the area that you need for, or that you should have. For example, like we know in the cervical and lumbar spine, you're supposed to have a lordosis, but unfortunately things can happen to your spine through injury, trauma, or misalignment that you can actually end up with a kyphosis in those areas, meaning it's actually bending the wrong way. You can also end up with a smaller version of a lordosis, meaning now you have a hypo lordosis or less than normal. The same thing is true in the thoracic spine. If you're spent to have a kyphosis, you can unfortunately have a lordosis in the thoracic spine, or you can have a hypokyphosis less than normal. The normal ranges for each curve type are different depending on the area that you're looking at. A cervical lordosis, the ideal curvature, is about 40 degrees, but there is a range. Somewhere between 20 and 40 degrees is considered normal. We can do measurements of your spine and of your frame to determine should you have closer to 20 or closer to 40. There is some angles that you can help determine what is that normal for you. The lumbar lordosis, again, the ideal is 40 degrees, but there's a range here that it can also exist up to you know 30 degrees, up to 60 degrees, there is a range. And again, there are measurements that we can do to help determine what your ideal lumbar lordosis would be. These angles, one is something for your cervical spine to determine your cervical lordosis is something called thoracic inlet angle. And then for your lumbar lordosis is something called pelvic incidence. Both these angles can be acquired off x-rays to determine what your normal should be. The last thing is gonna be your thoracic kyphosis. It also has a normal range, somewhere around 40 degrees, but there is a range as well. It can be as low as 20, as high as 45. There is a range, and this range is normal and is what allows the body to function and the spine to function biomechanically is, is when it falls in these normal ranges. When your spine falls out of these normal ranges, we know that normal biomechanics are now disrupted, disrupted and it can lead to problems that cause malfunction through the spinal structures. And one growing diagnosis is something called adult spinal deformity. This is when patients lose their normal spinal range and biomechanics and curvatures, typically from the side view of the spine, and they end up with something called adult spinal deformity. Unfortunately, spine and cervical spine, meaning your mid and lower spine and 
the cervical spine are becoming a very, very large reason why patients are becoming disabled in the, as they age. When your spine falls out of these normal ranges is you can become now predisposed to having future complications with your spine. Just like if your blood pressure without its normal range, you're predisposed to having heart problems and other issues as a result to high blood pressure like heart problems and stroke. So therefore, when we look at the normal view of the spine, we definitely are concerned about the side view, but we're also concerned with the front view. The front view is when the spine should be completely straight. If the spine is not completely straight, meaning there's a curvature from the front, we call this scoliosis. And this is when there's an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine with rotation, making it a three-dimensional problem. The measurement of the scoliosis angle needs to be greater than 10 degrees, and the rotation is typically into the concavities of the scoliosis. Typically, when you develop a unnatural forward curvature of the spine, it also affects the natural side curvatures of the spine, meaning most patients who have loss of curvatures this way have gained curvatures this way, or people that have gained curvatures this way have loss of curvatures from the side. What we don't know is which one causes what. We just know as they both get worse together. So therefore, looking at these uh, symmetries and this alignment is very important to maintain because we want people's spine to maintain its normal alignment and function throughout their entire life. Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer proactive treatment models to help restore as much as the spine's normal curvatures from the side and actually remove as much curvatures from the front to help preserve natural function. So therefore, as your body ages, you're not prone to these conditions like spinal degeneration, arthritis, and adult spinal deformity. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.